Alright, let's do this. Coming in at number 10, we have more MK Ultra. Sometimes the declassification of files reveals the wildest of conspiracy theories to be true. There was a rumor way back in the 1970s that the government was trying to find a way to control people's minds. The project involved human experimentation, and United States citizens were unwittingly doped with LSD. They underwent hypnosis, sensory deprivation, isolation, and torture. John Greenwald, founder of disclosure site The Black Vault, obtained information on MKUltra via the trusty Freedom of Information Act in 2004. But many files are still missing, and many more were actually destroyed. Shockingly, CIA Director Richard Helms ordered all of the MKUltra files to be destroyed in 1973. In 2018, more than 4,000 new MKUltra documents were requested from the CIA after a successful crowdfunding campaign. It seems that the new records will be released shortly and will contain undisclosed information on the behavior modification efforts. In our number 9 spot we have secret affairs. It is no secret that JFK had an affair with Marilyn Monroe and Bill Clinton allegedly had his affair, but honestly, let's not be so naive as to think that they are the only ones. Apparently Lyndon Johnson was allegedly known to be quite the ladies man within the Oval Office and for decades there have been rumors of presidents that were also in the closet about their sexual but still, most of that is, you know, hush hush, probably because of all the press and attention that would arise if such things were revealed, so makes sense. Also, the more people know about you personally, the more you become vulnerable to judgment and possible dislike, and so remaining somewhat of a mystery in order to control how the public sees you is definitely in every president's best interest. In our number eight spot, we have President John Quincy Adams. Look, if the presidents become old and incapable of working, or if they turned out to be a little mentally unstable, you're probably not going to know about it. Why? Because in the government's eyes, the less you know, the better. The presidents are just one person, and they probably aren't the only ones that make the decisions. And so from the government's perspective, if you're able to be kept out of the loop, then that's just what they're going to do. Perhaps not right, but what can we do? Which is why it is not surprising to find out that President John Quincy Adams, the US's sixth president, President, had possibly gone a little crazy while he was in office. Apparently he believed that the world was hollow and even helped fund a program that would help drill a hole into the ground to try to contact the mole people and begin trading negotiations. Even in the 1800s this was known to be a hoax so no wonder they covered this one up. In our number 7 spot we have George Washington. As great as he was for the American people, apparently one thing that he kinda sucked at was war. Apparently he was not a good military commander, and when it came to strategy, he lost every major battle that he fought. Apparently once when he was supposed to capture a French fort, his men accidentally open fired on a British unit. Oops. <laughs> his poor commander skills would have probably hindered the public's perception on how he was an exceptional leader. So it was probably best that the public didn't know about this. It makes sense as to why the government protected this secret. He ended up being what some think to be one of the greatest presidents, so that was probably a good decision. In our number 6 spot we have political clubs. Look, it's no secret that so many presidents and political figures have been tied to clubs and cults and groups and they have been accused of some pretty unfathomable things. But does that mean every president and political figure is a part of them? Of course not. Regardless, there's no proof and we can only speculate based on evidence we have and the evidence is limited. There are pictures though of some of the past presidents being a part of specific clubs such as President Ronald Reagan and Richard Nixon on Robbins Island where there was believed to be a cult like club on that island at the time. But who knows? That's kind of purely speculation. Regardless, we know that the government will continue to protect these specific clubs and their secrets and nothing will change in that respect anytime soon. Coming up in our number 5 spot we have President Roosevelt's secret. This one is purely speculation but would be insane if it was proven to be true. The story of the attack on Pearl Harbor is known around the world because of how horrendous it was. We have all been told the story of the attack being completely unexpected and the country being blindsided. But there is some speculation as to whether that's the whole story or not. Word on the street is that allegedly President Roosevelt actually cut off 
trade to Japan. And people say that he allegedly told other countries to not trade with Japan, leaving Japan in a state of panic. The attack was supposedly a response to this decision and therefore, it wouldn't be entirely unexpected if it were proven to be true. Now, America was at war and the Japanese were technically on the opponent's side, so that decision was probably an attempt to get Japan to change positions. But in any case, crazy stuff if it were true. In our number four spot we have TV programs are. Allegedly, the initial reason why TV programs were created was with the purpose to be able to program the masses and control the narrative around the war and what was happening in the world. Experiments such as people being shown a train coming at them and the conclusion of their reaction to run away and think it to be real showed the power of imagery and how it can influence our emotions, how it can create real fear. The government knows this and the government and presidents use this to their advantage, especially the presidents that have the media on their side. Ever wonder why everyone is super uneasy during election time and filled with fear and chaos and then all of a sudden when the election is done, it all goes away? Make up whatever opinion you like on this, but it is fascinating to observe and it is almost laughable that we went about calling TV shows TV programs for so long without even realizing what we were saying, but they knew. In our number three spot we have Thomas Jefferson's stage fright. This isn't so much terrifying as it was seemingly terrifying for Jefferson to experience, but apparently Thomas Jefferson was actually allegedly a horrible public speaker and was terrified of it. People believe that perhaps he just had a stuttering problem, but apparently that is the reason as to why throughout his presidency he only gave two speeches in total. Lordy, that is quite a secret. I truly wonder how they kept that one a secret. Well, anyways, regardless, he was known for being brilliant and is known for making great improvements to the American society, but who knows? Maybe if that was common knowledge, the public may have been hard on him for it and he might not have done as good of a job. So maybe it's best that we didn't know. In our number two spot, we have restricted areas. Okay, this is another obvious one because obviously the governments of the countries of the world are protecting all of the restricted areas in their countries, including the secret presidential hideaways which we know exist. But in any case, there are restricted areas around the world such as secret bunkers for the presidents, but also a whole town called called Mercury in Nevada, Area 51 in Nevada, North Base Secret Base in Canada, Menwith Hill Royal Air Force Station in the UK that's leased to the US. So many restricted areas around the world with secrets that I'm sure we can't even imagine. The potential things that lie within these secret places is hard to imagine. I bet you there is just so many things that would blow our minds and I'm not just talking about secret presidential affairs that I'm sure happen. We're talking aliens obviously. Coming up in our number one spot, we have the Presidential Book of Secrets. Allegedly, there is a book of secrets that has been passed down from US president to US president over the years, and it was revealed in the popular movie National Treasure, one of my personal favorites, not gonna lie. This is a book that is allegedly hidden in the library at the White House, and only the librarian knows of its location, in case, you know, something happens to the president. President Obama hinted at this book being real on a talk show interview once. Some speculate that it was complete sarcasm, but on another occasion, he did did say that Donald Trump would learn a series of deep secrets when he got into the office, so that's suspicious. Regardless, if it was real, he's not about to reveal that to us because it's a secret, duh. Number 10, Project Stargate. If you've watched Stranger Things, then this one probably sounds familiar to you. In the show, Eleven started off as an experiment to psychically spy on the Russians, and turns out, this was actually real. In the 1970s in California and later in Maryland, the CIA recruited numerous men and women who claimed they had ESP, or extrasensory perception. People with ESP typically say that they can read minds or move objects without touching them. They were recruited to try and help uncover military and domestic intelligence secrets. Mostly they just wanted them to spy on the Russians by reading their minds. The government covered it up of course because why would they want people knowing they're trying to use magic powers to win a war. But in 2017 when 12 million pages of records were declassified, all of the information about the so called Project Stargate became public knowledge. People learning that they had been using the men and women to locate hostages and even track fugitives throughout the states. Coming in at number 9, we have PPD 29. 
catchy. In 2015, Obama released his new hostage policy, which was called President Policy Directive No. 30. Now, the last publicly announced derivative was PPD 28, which led people to realise that 29 must have been passed under the radar. PPD 29 is clearly a secret national security order. This literally is a secret, so I have no idea what to tell you other than it exists, and in six years' time, its declassification will be up for discussion. We may find out sooner if the law ever needs to be executed publicly, although, as it's in the national security interest, we probably don't want to find out until it's declassified. Coming into number eight, we have swine flu. Okay, hands up if you actually contracted swine flu. Me, but I wasn't living in the United States, so maybe this doesn't apply. But still, it sucked, although I've never been as skinny as after I recovered. Swings and roundabouts. So it's been 10 years since the outbreak of swine flu, which caused a global pandemic. But actually, it turned out to not be as bad as everyone thought it would be, thank goodness. Nonetheless, 10 years means that documents regarding the government's knowledge on the epidemic are soon to be declassified. It seems from a Forbes article that something shady may have been going on with the government and swine flu. The article suggests that not only were sick pigs not being monitored, but also that the government funded Center for Disease Control were very protective of their data. They were not fulfilling the public health mission by sharing their findings. Coming into number seven, we have quote unquote sicko jokes. In September 2018, it was revealed that the Cold War era jokes had been discovered among millions of declassified documents regarding Soviet Russia. The CIA's deputy director in the 1980s received a document entitled Sicko Jokes. It was a file of jokes told amongst Soviets themselves about their own leaders. One corker from the era was, a worker stands in line at a liquor store. They say, I've had enough. Save my place. I'm going to shoot Gorbachev. Two hours later, he returns to reclaim his place in line. His friend asks, did you get him? To which they reply, no. The line there was even longer than the line here. troll a lol a lol some classic 1989 slash 90 humour. Sure. Gorbachev, of course, was the last leader of the Soviet Union and at the helm amid its collapse. My point being that if the CIA had a list of jokes about the Soviet Union, they absolutely have documents containing loads of jokes for all political leaders and honestly, I kind of want to hear them. Building on from that, Soviet secrets are coming into number six. In the name of access to information, which is something democracies are supposed to champion, the CIA is obliged to declassify documents. Sure. One way they get around this is by releasing a whole load at the same time and hoping that the juicy information, the shady information, goes unnoticed in the sea of data. This may or may not have been their thought process when they released millions, actually millions, of Soviet era files in 2017. It's already been revealed that the CIA recruited mind readers to spy on Soviets, with the job title Remote Viewers in something called Project Stargate. What do the other 12 million files? I always have to reveal? I'll have to wait and see, but like, I don't know, Project Stargate sounded pretty exciting. Okay, I swear. This is the last I will mention Russia in this list, but now seems like a good time to mention Donald Trump's Russia release at number five. In late 2018, Donald Trump ordered the release of classified documents regarding the Russian interference with the 2016 election. The White House announced that the press had asked the Justice Department and the Director of the National Intelligence to publish secret material. On September the 6th, 2018, he tweeted, maybe declassification to find additional corruption. He was seeming to suggest that there was some kind of deep state working to undermine him. The statement came a year after it was revealed in declassified documents that Russia did actually interfere with the election. By the end of September 2018, Trump had backed down somewhat on the document release and asked a justice watchdog to review the Russian docs. Hmm. Coming into number four, we have weapons of mass destruction. It has been 18 years since the war on terror began and 16 years since the onset of the Iraq war, when the United States decided to invade the Middle Eastern country. Some documents have already been declassified. The rest may come at the 25 year mark in 2026 and 2028, so not long now. In 2015, the CIA seemingly declassified the documents justifying the war, two years after President Obama declared the war over. 
over. The document was from 13 years prior and was supposed to be a justification for the war, but in actuality, it revealed that the US were lacking, and I quote, specific information on many key aspects of Iraqi President Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction. Basically, the declassified documents show that it was all a little bit of a ruse. The declassified document led to Congress concluding that the Bush administration had overstated the Iraqi threat. I wonder what else we will learn about these so called weapons of mass destruction from the documents when they're declassified. Coming into number three, we have the JFK assassination. John F. Kennedy Jr. was assassinated over 50 years ago, and there are still a lot of questions surrounding his murder. The official line is that the perpetrator was Lee Harvey Oswald, but there are a number of conspiracies that suggest that this isn't the full story. There has been a slow release of classified files on the November 1963 assassination of JFK, but of course, Thousands remain a secret. Donald Trump released further Kennedy files to the public, but the full story is, of course, yet to come. Not all of the documents were released, some were very much held back, so the full story on one of the most high profile deaths of all time is yet to be told. Coming into number two, we have Guantanamo. Guantanamo Bay was set up by the George Bush administration in 2002. It is a United States prison camp filled mainly with suspected terrorists. Rumors of detainee torture and imprisonment without trial were very much just rumors, until the CIA were forced to declassify a number of reports on the controversial prison. I'll read an excerpt from a Guantanamo Bay document I found in the FBI declassified vault. On a couple of occasions, I entered an interview room to find find a detainee chained hand and foot in the fetal position to the floor with no chair, food or water. Most times they had urinated or defecated themselves and had been left there for 18 to 24 hours or more. On one occasion the air conditioning had been purposefully turned up so far that the temperature was so cold. The detainee was barefoot and shaking from the cold. On another occasion the AC had been turned off completely, making the temperature in the unventilated room well over 100 degrees. The detainee was almost unconscious on the floor with a pile of hair next to him. He'd literally been pulling it out throughout the night. The report also mentions the sound torture that had been rumoured. The information was supposed to be declassified in 2031, but during the Obama administration, there was a data dump of declassified Guantanamo documents. Again though, there are still thousands of files waiting to be released which will further reveal the extent of government torture and more. Finally coming into number one, we have 9-11. It has been 18 years since 9-11, so does that mean in six years time we're going to find out exactly what happened? Uh, will we read classified government documents that detail exactly how the planes hit and what it took to melt steel beams? Will we find out more about the alleged pipeline through Afghanistan? Was there advanced knowledge of an attack? Did the government ignore warnings? My guess is we're going to need to wait longer than the usual 25 years for these answers, as likely the classified documents are still pretty sensitive. Some answers are coming though, many documents have already been declassified. The Obama administration famously declassified the final 28 pages of the December 2002 report. This was conducted by the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence and the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Honestly, like, I think in my lifetime we will have more answers. I really, 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 really hope so. In our number 10 spot, we have Ulysses S. Grant. Apparently, Ulysses is known for being a bit of a badass in his time, but also, what you may not know is that he was actually a bit of a scaredy cat. How relatable. Same, Ulysses. Me too. But honestly, no wonder the government kept that a secret because if the public knew that he dealt with being afraid of a lot of things, it wouldn't have reassured them that they had a strong you know, fearless leader running their country. Apparently he had so many fears, including not being able to look at a single drop of blood. I hope he never had to go to war. Poor guy. Honestly, I feel fate when I see blood too, so I feel very understood right now. Number 9, Vault 7. Vault 7 was definitely never meant to make it to the public eye, but unfortunately for the CIA, it got leaked. So what actually is Vault 7? Back in 2017, WikiLeaks started releasing a series of CIA documents, Vault 7 was a group of documents that contained hacking systems that were either developed or otherwise obtained by the CIA. For the most part, it should make you wary of your technology and how the government is using it. Many people know that apps will track our searches and data to learn about us and maybe even sell it to malicious companies, but it's much more than that. Weeping Angel has
has the ability to turn a Samsung television into a recording device, even if it appears that your television is switched off. Vault 7 also contained the ability to intercept all your iPhone messages before they got encrypted through apps like WhatsApp, Signal, and Telegram. And according to the documents, the CIA can allegedly take over your phone by exploiting vulnerabilities. But Apple has said that they patch these vulnerabilities as soon as they're aware of them. Number 8. Battalion 316 Intelligence Battalion 316 went through a few different names throughout its existence, but it was pretty much always functioning for the same reason. They were an army unit in Honduras that was responsible for carrying out political assassinations, and even kidnapping and causing pain to people who were seen as potential political competition throughout the 1980s. The group received both support and training from the CIA, even receiving their training at United States military bases. They were a military kill squad that definitely wasn't known for being friendly, committing various crimes like terrorism, misogyny, ethnic cleansing, and even so-called crimes against humanity. Their goal to remain in power in Honduras failed, leaving behind a long list of innocent victims. In 1996, members of the US Congress asked President Bill Clinton to release the documentation about the country's involvement with the human rights violations that took place in Honduras, and this is when we learned about the battalion. Number 7. MK Ultra. Let's once again return to the Red Scare and the United States fight against Russians and communism. During the Cold War, they came under the belief that the communists had invented a drug that would allow them to control human minds, and the US wanted a piece of that, starting their own research into the technique under the name Project MK Ultra, trying to find their own mind control substance that could be turned into a weapon. It ran from the 50s to the 60s and led to many unknowing or even unwilling subjects being given illicit substances. The experiments were apparently covertly funded in American universities and research facilities, but it turns out that the experiments also took place in prisons and detention centers in the US, Japan, Germany, and the Philippines. The goal was to destroy the current mind and replace it with something new. Attempts included using electric shocks and illicit substances. For some, the experiments were fatal, and many others had their lives completely changed. Number 6. Operation Operation Cyclone. Operation Cyclone became known as one of the longest and most expensive covert operations taken on by the CIA, costing around $630 million per year for a whole decade. So what was Operation Cyclone and why was the government pouring so much cash into it? It was an operation that worked to arm and finance militant Islamic groups during the military intervention by the USSR. The goal was to aid anti-Soviet resistance outside of the United States. They gave loans, aircrafts, weapons, and other military assistance to the groups in Afghanistan, costing the United States government billions of dollars for these so-called care packages. Eventually, the Soviets were pushed out of Afghanistan, but conspiracy was still spinning. Many of the weapons ended up being sold in local markets instead of going to the rebels, and some people believe that Osama bin Laden and the Al-Qaeda received assistance from the US military. Number five. Operation Ajax In the 1950s, a coup took place in Iran, and the CIA documents about it weren't released until they were pressured to a total 64 years later. As it turns out, the agency played a large role in the coup that led to the end of the current Iranian Prime Minister, a rise in nationalism, and sour US-Iranian relationships remaining into the 21st century. The motivation was oil. The US and UK wanted Iran's oil, but their new Prime Minister made it inaccessible to them, so the two countries conspired to overthrow him and get the royal back. The coup seemed to fail, and the CIA sent a message to their base in Iran calling it off. But the CIA officer who received it said, nah, we're not done here. So the next day, with crowds allegedly hired by the CIA, the coup, or Operation Ajax, went through and the Prime Minister was overthrown. The monarchy and oil fields restored in the country. Anti-Western sentiment also being restored and growing to new and extreme levels. Number 4. The Five Eyes Are you familiar with one of the farthest reaching intelligence and espionage agencies in the world? You are probably a part of it and don't even know it. It is the once secret Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. After World War II, the US and UK came together to create an information sharing alliance as a result of how important communication was for them during the war effort. And in 1956, Canada, Australia,
Australia and New Zealand were added to this group. The classification status on these documents was USA, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, eyes only. And that was obviously a bit wordy, so they shortened it down to five eyes. It has been operating for 70 years now and is used for surveillance and sharing classified information between the five countries. The alliance was especially important during the Cold War when the countries shared a lot of information like the location of Soviet weapons in North America. The alliance was kept a secret until documents of the original UK and USA agreement were released back in 2010. Number 3. Operation PB Success Similarly to Operation Ajax, Operation PB Success was a covert CIA military operation that took place in another country, this time Guatemala. This was another coup that took place only a year after the one in Iran in 1954. At the time, Guatemala had a very new democracy, only being on their second democratically elected president. But the United States saw him as a threat, this being due to his allowance of the Guatemalan Communist Party to act freely and land reform movements that threatened US industries. The CIA then worked through various different plans of action to overthrow the Guatemalan government, including assassination and faking tensions between the country and Honduras. They spread false information, placed anonymous phone calls, and hired anti-communist students to create a fake opposition. Eventually, the president stepped down and their democracy was seen as unfavorable. The United States training that the Guatemalan military now had led to a war lasting decades, tearing apart the country. But PB success was a success as it worked, and they were able to deny CIA involvement until the documents were released in 1997. Number 2. The Secret War We're once again fighting communism, this time in Vietnam. But while the Vietnam War was taking place, a smaller secret war was taking place in Laos, attempting to stop communism from spreading to Southeast Asia. The Americans essentially used the countries of Laos and Cambodia to fight their own war against northern Vietnam and communism, using their tribes as their soldiers. While it was clear that the small armies had no hopes of truly winning against northern Vietnam, the United States and the CIA continued on with their fight, devastating the country and peoples of Laos and Cambodia. They came out of the war with their land and lives completely lost and changed, but the CIA wrote it down in their history books as a success, disregarding the country's sacrifice. The CIA's historical retrospective on the situation not being released until many years later. Number 1. Operation Condor It's the Cold War again and the United States government are fighting against terrorism, this time under the code name Operation Condor. It was a campaign of political repression and so-called state terror that was backed by the US and CIA. It involved many heinous activities like kidnapping, killings, political espionage, and much more, all taking place throughout South America. The CIA chose to describe it as a cooperative effort by the intelligence slash security services of several South American countries to combat terrorism and subversion. But really, it was a lot more than that. Condor's key members were Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, and later Brazil. The United States provided them with planning, coordination, technical support, and military training all routed through the CIA. It led to many military dictatorships and numerous deaths throughout South America. And there is so much detail and information on this one that if you want it, you're just going to have to look it up for yourself. 